temple was um, dedicated probably uh, I think it was three days before the storm and so there were uh, people from the Buddhist community that were here for the dedication of the temple and uh, the storm came in and all these people were stuck here so there were I think something in the range of 51 people in the attic space of the temple which is only about 20% of the actual size of the temple. And the water rose all the way to the ceiling of the temple and the waves were breaking on the roof and they were stuck in there for I believe like about 14 hours and then of course they came out too. You know just debris everywhere and you know um, sediment and sewage and everything settled in here. A lot of uh, there were like 11 or 9 to 11 wrecked cars I think in the parking lot. This house was uh, in the parking lot and another one from the back was in the property. Uh, this Buddhist temple is tied pretty heavily into the Vietnamese community here which takes up a lot of this area and um, they, they partnered up. It's a long chain of people that ended up uh, partnering up that ended that uh, ended with us being here. Essentially um, a variety of people from this art community that we participate in called Burning Man started coming here and we we had a dome donated for our use and all these sh uh, world shelters and we did a, a distribution site out of here providing you know an immediate need for like water and hygiene products and food and canned food and things like that and then as you can tell by my attire it started getting colder and wet again and so we started providing people with um, blankets and warm clothes jackets tents tarps getting people shelter and then some heavy machinery was donated to us and we started utilizing that towards clearing property so people could get their FEMA trailers as quickly as possible. And now we have sort of a combined effort of all those things kind of going on. And we've been rebuilding the temple so that it'll be, um, you know, open for public the way it was meant to be right before the storm. And we're just trying to do whatever we can out here to help people clean up a little bit at this point. A lot of the people have waited so long for their FEMA trailer that they've had no choice really but to move on and leave. So when you look out to the east towards the point, everything is pretty much leveled. Um, the contractors have come in and bulldozed all the properties. You know, everything is pretty much considered and, and is deemed a health hazard. And so they've just sort of bulldozed everything. And very few people have been afforded the opportunity to stay in this particular neighborhood here. Where are you from? Volunteering. Are you a Buddhist? I'm not a Buddhist. But it is very nice staying at the Buddhist temple. You get to stay here too, yeah? Yeah, we're living in this dome over here. Oh, that big dome, that's the one he was talking about. Yeah. So, you, so that is an excavator that you were given? Yeah, we were lent for, um, it's by Daiwan Dusan. They lent us the excavator and a, and a front loader for, for six months. And what are you guys doing with it? Um, we help people with their yards and with their cleanup and stuff. So. You just say, okay, you want to demolish, we'll go in there with our excavator and Essentially, demolish? yeah. Because what happens is um, the, the city contractors, if they go in, like, they're... Like if we if if we go in, we can like move move the house out of the way, move the stuff, and keep all the fill and everything without destroying like the yard. And we're actually kind of careful about it and go through and like we'll rake, clean up, you know, get it so they can get their trailer in there. But a lot of the city contractors will go in and they'll just push the house out of the way and leave debris around the yard and dig out some of the fill. And then the people like where they can get their trailer, they actually have to go and purchase fill to fill in where the contractor shoveled it all out. So and you guys charge for that? No. So Daiwu just donated it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it was great. How many they houses came down a day are you guys doing? What you, it takes a little while. Like it, it depends on what else is going on too. Like, and we're working the temple as well, so it kind of depends. Like each day is very different. No day is really typical. But we also have like a little tractor that we've had for a long time that we brought down here when we first came down. And we use that when we don't have like a big shed to destroy or whatever. Well, actually, the little tractor can destroy a shed, but like. If it's a big house, you can't do it. So we take the tractor out with like a group of people. The tractor can move the big stuff, and then people rake and clear the yards. Because a lot of times people don't need a big thing demolished. They just need um, 
like they need to get their trailer. Like we, we started out with people that needed to get their trailer and they couldn't because their water and sewage hookups were covered up by debris. So we would go in and clear everything so they could get their trailer. Because sometimes FEMA would show up and be like, you can't have your trailer because that little pile right there, you know. And you'd be like, oh, I'm going to move it right now, I know. You mean FEMA would come in and say you can't have your trailer because of that? Yeah, because it has to be like right for or you go, and then you get put on the bottom of the list. You know? well, There's still people sleeping in tents I out hear, here. It's very, very cold. I mean, you can see here, we're in here, in, in these tents, and we're cold, and we have the dome and stuff. And yeah, and I we're slept still in my really car last night. It was cold. It's very cold, and you know, it's been raining. Even in this, with this like intricate setup, we still get wet every time it rains. Mm -hmm.